Incidentally, the Bolsheviks were absolutely intolerant of other opinions, differing from their own. And I think this should remind you of something that is happening. And we see what is happening in the Western countries. It is with puzzlement that we see the practices Russia used to have and that we left behind in distant path. The fight for equality and against discrimination turns into an aggressive dogmatism uh, on the brink of absurdity when great authors of the past, such as fake Shakespeare, are no longer taught in schools and universities because they are announced as backward classics that did not understand the importance of gender or race in Hollywood. There are leaflets reminding what you should do in the cinema, in the films, how many personalities and actors you've got, well, what kind of color, what sex, and sometimes it's even, even tighter and stricter than what the Department of Propaganda of the Soviet Communist Party Central Committee did. And the fight against racism, which is a lofty goal, turns into new culture, uh, council culture, and into reverse discrimination, racism on the obverse. And it brings people apart, whereas the true fighters for civic rights, they were trying to eliminate those differences. I asked my colleagues to fight this quote from Martin Luther King, and he said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That is a true value. But I'm afraid this is not what we see in reality right now. Incidentally, in Russia, most of our country simply do not care what skin color you have. He or she, that's not that important, because each and every one of us is a human person, human being. That's the most important thing. We see a phantasmagoria brought about by this discussion in the Western countries about the rights of men and women. You know, uh, the Bolsheviks were speaking about nationalizing not just the property, but also women. The proponents of new approaches go so far as they want to eliminate the whole notions of men and women. And those who dare say that men and women exist, and this is a biological fact, they are all but banished. You know, parent number one, parent number two, or uh, the uh, parent that has given birth, or instead of breast milk, you say human milk. And you say all of that so that people who are not sure of their sex or gender are not unhappy. And I would like to say that this is not something new. In the 20s, in the 1920s, the Soviet Kulturträger came up with the so-called Newspeak. And they thought that thereby they were building a new consciousness and coming up with new values. And they went so far that we feel the consequences up until now. There are some monstrous things when, from a very young age, you teach to children that a boy can easily become a girl, and you impose on them this selection, this choice. You push the parents aside and make the child take these decisions that can destroy their lives. And if we call the spade a spade, this is uh, nigh to uh, a crime against humanity, and all of that under the banner of progress. 